traders a gear shift. Among the hundreds of thousands of people who line the streets across the UK to pay their respects to Queen Elizabeth II during her state funeral yesterday, there was one image that captured the hearts of the nation. It was the Queen's loyal corgis making a surprise appearance to witness the procession at Windsor as they said goodbye to their loving owner. The Queen's favourite pony, Emma, which I also think is a fantastic name for a pony, by the way, was also there, head bowed. I don't want to sound too much like Kate Burley after the Bataclan attacks, but the sadness in her eyes. We now know that Prince Andrew and his ex-wife Sarah Ferguson We'll be looking after the corgis, whether or not that explains the sadness in their eyes. Lots of wait and see. But just to put your minds at ease, of course, it will be Prince Andrew looking after the Queen's corgis. But do our pets have feelings? And will they miss us if we die? Or, frankly, are we on a hiding to nothing trying to win their affections? I'm joined now by Rachel Rogers, a clinical animal behaviouralist who can tell us how the corgis might have been feeling. Um, and uh, great to have you on the show, OK? Fantastic to have you on the show, Rachel. But, um, yes, do animals feel a, a genuine sense of loss? Will they have had any appreciation of the occasion whatsoever? Yeah, it's quite a difficult question, really, because actually the science at the minute just doesn't really give us the evidence that people probably want for me to say that definitely the corgis are grieving. What we do know is that certainly dogs are very perceptually aware and they are social animals. So they are going to have noticed that something has changed. And what we know is that they are going to, if they have a big bond with someone, particularly in homes where you've got, say, like a person who lives just with their dogs, in those kind of situations, they can show similar changes in their behaviour to what we would expect from a person who is grieving. So I don't want to be very anthropomorphic and put onto these animals and say, you know, they're definitely grieving, but it is likely that they are were really aware of kind of changes in their living arrangements for one, but in, in everybody else's mood and what is going on around them as well over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, do we have a bit of a problem, do you think, trying to ascribe human emotions to animals? Do you think we need to just stop doing that? <gasps> In some respects, I wish we did it more because I think some of the ways we interact with animals, if we took their feelings into account, we might actually behave with these animals a bit nicer and a bit kinder. Um, but when it comes to things like this and higher level emotions, we just don't have the science there yet. There is some research to suggest that actually if we put animals like a dog in an MRI scanner, the parts of their brain that activate are the same parts of the human brain when we are feeling certain emotions. But because we just can't ask them and say to them, how are you feeling about this? We don't have, you know, concrete answers to say whether it is the same. But their behaviours do change in similar ways. So some will go off their food. Um, some of them withdraw quite a lot from their activities um, in a way that you might see people do, you know, staying inside more, not really wanting to exercise, going off their food. We do see those kind of behavioural changes in our animals at times like this. Um, and that can be, you know, loss of a, a human, um, but it can also be loss of a, a sibling animal or an animal that's been in the home with them as well.